I'm wondering today if anybody has ever cut a board too short and wished it was a little bit longer so you could add some wood on the end. Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett and of course uh, we probably all cut boards wrong. Today I'm going to be looking at something called a finger joint where we might be able to add some wood on the end. And if you're new here today I invite you to subscribe, click that little notification bell and let's get on with figuring out how to use this. Some time ago, I came across this router bit in one of the stores that I deal with. It was at what they call an open box. So somebody had opened it and, or maybe brought it back, but it's never been used. It's called a finger joint. Now there's adjustable finger joints. This is a fixed finger joint. And because the box was open, there's no instructions. I couldn't find anything on a quick look on the internet. And I thought, you know what, I've got this thing sitting around, I should figure out how to use it. So <laughs> we're all going to learn together today on how to use this finger joint bit. Now the first thing we need to do is install this half inch router bit, and I already have a half inch collet in there. And of course the first thing we do whenever we're doing anything with the router is unplug it to make sure that it's safe. And we're ready to go. Okay, as you can see there's some carbide in there and I, for some reason I think that carbide is what I want to align the fence with. I'm going to try that anyway and that should be it right about there. So I don't really know what height we want to be at here so I'm just going to take the first step and do a guess but what I think is going to happen is if we run through this way on this side and then take our matching piece which is this one and flip it over um, I think those will match up so I'm going to try that and see how that works. So there's my two pieces of wood and they're cut from the same board so they're the exact same thickness but what I'm going to do I'm going to run one face up and the other one face down and we'll see what happens with that and because I'm going to be running through the ends I'm using this push block so that I get a good uh, firm backing on that. Okay, well, let's see what happened with these. So we'll both go face up and, well, look at that. <laughs> Where is it there? There they go. They match nicely, um, but they don't. Now I wonder if, they, if we didn't flip them. So they have a nice, they fit nicely, but of course now you can see that they're, there's off, something off there. So gonna have to do some jiggery pokery here and find out what we need to do to get them to line up properly. Okay I've readjusted the height of the bit and I'm going to see what that does. Somehow I think I haven't got it quite right yet. But we'll see what happens. Well, we've got exactly the same thing as we had last time, which is kind of what I thought. Okay, I've gone back and had a critical look at this. Now, I've made two joints that are wrong, um, and I need to know why. And what I, when I looked at this, what I realized is if I go half, just half the width up, um, what happens is those joints actually fit together quite nicely and what I realized if you look down under here look at the, the gap under there and what that means is one of these needs to be lifted up when it goes through the cutter. Now I can do two things I can raise the cutter or I can change the height of the table and changing the height of the table is far more accurate. So I went out and I went and got some bits of plywood that are plastic that I work with from time to time and I looked at that and you can see that that plastic is too thick. 
I got another one, you can see that that one, again, too thick, you can see the edge of the plastic there. I had some clear plastic, same thing, you can see the edge of the plastic there. But look at what I did find when I was going through my stack of plastic. Look at this one here. It fits almost perfectly. And so what I thought, if I use this as the lift, what will happen? So let me just turn this around so I can show you what happened. There is what happened. Look at that. Virtually perfect. And what I did was just use a little bit of plastic. So I'm going to show you what I did to get that cut. Okay, there's the two pieces of wood that I'm going to use. You can see they're squared off on the end. Uh, and there's the little piece of plastic, and I'll be showing you how that goes in. I also made myself a new push block. So let's do the first one, and we're not going to lift that at all. We're just going to run that right through. There it is. That's just a perfect, perfect cut. Now imagine if you had different types of wood, what could you do? Let's try something like that. And that's what that joint looks like with some contrasting woods. And you can see the bottom there, it's it's flat across, it's almost perfect, a little bit of sanding. Uh, and these boards that I'm using here, they're, they're a little on the rough side, they haven't even been planed. Uh, they've only gone through the, the table saw and still they're uh, lining up almost perfectly. So um, that's a great thing. Now look at with contrasting woods what you could do. And there's all sorts of things that you could do when you get into doing some banding. Now banding, of course, is this sort of thing where you have little pieces of wood and literally you put little pieces of wood together and that's how you do it. On the edge, you glue them all together and then you cut them into thin little strips and that's called banding. Imagine what you could do with this. Or if you were making cutting boards, the edges or sides of cutting boards, what a nice detail. Well, I'm not sure I would use this uh, if I cut a board too short and, and just to elongate a board like that. I guess it would work in a pinch, uh, but I'm thinking more about the details that you could put on different things and what you could do with it. Uh, I think there's some possibilities there. So a uh, very interesting bit. Uh, and now that we know how to use it, um, what are the possibilities? Well, that concludes my short video today on using the, the Freud V-joint finger joint bit. Um, and you know, there's lots of potential with this. You, you know what I'm, I'm excited about? Uh, when you have a look at this uh, and all the ideas that you might be able to suggest where we could use this and what we could do with this, um, I just think there's tons and tons of potential here. So let me know what your thoughts are and where you think we might be able to use this to make some cool detail in some of the furniture that we make. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.